Why are coronary angiograms prescribed and what are the risks? Angina, chest pain, suspicious findings on a stress test, function of the right and left sides of the heart, left heart capacity, cardiac dysrhythmias, valvular heart disease, myocardial, myo meaning muscle, and cardial meaning heart. So heart muscle diseases, congenital heart diseases, heart failure. Now for most of those, actually these make sense, but by far the most common reason is, let's see if you've got a plaque in your coronary artery. And those are the ones where you really need to think twice, three and four times before you get that done. The complication rates, as I said, is 1%, and by far the biggest complication rate is some extra bleeding down in the groin area where it was inserted, and vast majority of those are dealt with without long-term problems. As I said, most common issues bleeding from the femoral artery, occasional guide wire tears in the artery wall. You do get some infections in blood clots. Those become far more serious. Death rates, as I said, pretty low given the fact that you're taking an instrument and going into somebody's Sparked. Or at least, yeah, I mean, you're getting to the arteries, you're going into somebody's arteries as they supply the heart. Death rates, 0.05%. In other words, and up to a quarter of a percent. So 0.05% is 1 20th of 1%. 0.25% is one quarter of 1%. So one out of 400, it's not that high at all. It is closer to those lower numbers, which is what, one twentieth of a hundredth. So pretty low numbers. Now, even with those, you have to realize that sound, for many of you, you might say, well, whoa, even a higher limit of one out of 400, that's a big death rate. Stop, think about it. A huge portion of these, you're already doing this kind of instrumentation on somebody who's got a very sick heart. In a lot of cases, that's the reality. And so, you know, if you're doing this on people that are relatively healthy and you're just looking to see how much plaque you have, how much quote risk, end quote, that you have, that's way closer to those lower numbers. And again, you start looking at that and you compare that to somebody who's at significant or by definition high risk. What we use for a definition of high risk is probability of a heart attack within 10 years of 10% or higher and half of those resulting in sudden death. So 5% probability of sudden death over the next 10 years is very much higher than the death rates we're talking about from instrumentation itself. I hope that's clear. If I've boogered it up too much, go ahead and ask questions to help me clarify in the Q&A session. The most significant risk is unnecessary stent or bypass and further delays in the actual treatment, which again is lifestyle. New England Journal of Medicine, this is one of the articles, initial invasive or conservative strategy for stable coronary disease, it's conservative strategy, which means more than anything else, lifestyle. You know, it's a physician's magazine. Physicians think about giving medications. And unfortunately, in most of this research, the assumption is made that your typical patient will not make lifestyle changes because of history that docs have with patients. That's a problem as well. Second article, also New England Journal, optimal medical therapy with or without PCI. PCI is what we said a few minutes ago, percutaneous intervention for stable coronary disease. And as I mentioned, the Orbita study, that's the next one, percutaneous coronary intervention in stable angina. This was an interesting study. It was done in England because most people think that it never would have been, it would have passed a human subject review here in the US. They actually took people who were slated for a stent and they said, we're gonna do a double blind. We'll even take you into the ER. We'll put you to sleep. The study group doesn't get anything. We just put you to sleep and wake you back up. The control group gets the stent that had originally been recommended. And as I've said multiple times in other videos, at the end of the day, the study group had the same number of events that the control group had. So whether you had a stent or not did not impact your probability of having an event, of having a heart attack. For those of you who think this just doesn't make sense, this is crazy, doc, you're an idiot, you get all this stuff. This has been a very hot debate for his continued to heat up and until at this point, so many studies are coming out showing that your typical way of handling heart attack and stroke and quote, preventing heart attacks with instrumentations just don't work. Well, go back. I mean, if that sounds really weird to you, go back and look at this article. This is talking about has broken record. It's been downloaded more than any other science medical article. And it talks about why most published research findings are false. John 
Leonidas is a physician. For many of us, it's obvious he's a Greek descent. That's where Ioannidis comes from. He's a well-respected doc in Stanford whose major perspective has been to talk about and show in studies how so much bad science gets into medical publications.